Let's talk about speed squares or rafter squares. I'll get to that. It's a tool that most builders have, but some, especially the newer ones, struggle to get the full use out of it. Hi, Len here. I bought myself a new speed square for this video. I'm going to start off with the basics and get to some of the more complex uses as the video progresses. You can buy them in several sizes. This is the most common size, a 180mm or 7 inch, which fits nicely in most tool belts and doesn't get in the way. You can get smaller ones, which aren't as common, and I do have a larger 300mm or 12 inch, which I use for cutting big rafters. You can also buy them in plastic, aluminium, or sometimes titanium. Honestly, I would avoid the plastic ones because I don't see them lasting. They're often not as defined as the metal ones and are often missing some of the features, although some of the cheap metal ones won't have those features either. You'll have to excuse the quality of my timber here. It's some timber I had stacked behind my house. It's a little bit dirty and mouldy and I've just denailed it. A speed square is exactly that, a square. So you've got a square line there. You can also do a 45 degree, you've got a pivot point, and you've got a protractor, which I'll get into later. A speed square can be used to easily check things are square. For example, checking that your circular saw is cutting plumb, or that your miter saw is cutting square and at 45 degrees, which is usually something I check each time I change the blade. You can use it to check that your corners are square when you're framing, but for setting your frames, you really want to be using a framing square or a roofing square, which is much larger. Whenever you start doing some framing, you want to ensure that the end of your piece of timber is square. With a speed square, you don't even need to get your pencil out. All you do is put your saw where you want to cut, put your square up against the sog plate. It's as easy as that. If you want to cut at a specific mark, then you don't need to draw an entire line. Just need a little line on the side that you're cutting from and you line up your saw to that. Speed Square also comes in handy when you're marking out your top and bottom plates. If you're marking both at once, all you need to do is measure and mark one, and then strike a line where your studs are going. You can also mark the visible side so that when you put your studs on, they're square to the edge of the timber. When marking your trusses or rafters, it's the same sort of thing, and it not only makes it clearer where the truss is going, but it also will let you know if something's not square. It could be that the bottom cord of your truss is slightly bent, or one of your marks is wrong. Most speed squares will have a series of indents in them which you can use for scribing. You can put your pencil in that indent and scribe a line. Good for cutting plasterboard, if you just need to rip a bit off the edge, you can run your knife in these indents. Now let's get to the exciting stuff. Rafter angles. That's why it's also called a rafter square. On your speed square, you've got this protract which has a series of angles on it. You've also got these common cuts and these hip and valley cuts, which is not something that we tend to use in New Zealand. We tend to just use degrees. There's benefits to doing it both ways, and I'll explain them shortly. I'm going to use a 35 degree angle, which lines up with seven on your rafter cuts. Let's say we are cutting a rafter. We won't worry about the length. That's something for another video. There is some fairly complex math. Nowadays, most builders will work it out using an app. The first cut we want to make is a plumb cut, which goes up to your ridge beam. Now with the speed square you're measuring 90 degrees out, I won't get into the details of it, so your plumb cuts will be 35 degrees. Now to mark that we get the pivot point on the length of timber and move it over so that on the same side of the timber you've got your 35 there. The next cut you want to make is where it's going to sit on your top plate, a bird's mouth. That's where your rafter length comes in. Let's say I'm going to do a rafter at 600 long. I can mark that there, use my speed square, and mark that 35 degrees again. That will be the measurement to the outside of my top plate. The inverse of 35 degrees is 55 degrees. That, that's just subtracting 35 degrees from 90 degrees. My top plate is 90 mil. So as long as I have it at 55 degrees and 90, that's my cut there. Let's ignore the fact that I'm taking way too big a bird's mouth out of this tiny piece of timber. As a general rule, we aren't allowed to take more than a third out.
Now let's say we have a 100 mil tail on this as well. If you measure an extra 100 mil from the end, you're getting 100 mil at the angle. Now you can work that out or you can use your speed square again. You go 100 mil and then cut that at 35. I'm going to cut a bunch of these, stitch them all together and then hopefully we have, I don't know, maybe something resembling a doghouse or something. And then I'll show you how the hip and valley scale works. Look what I've made. We've got a gable and over here we've got some hips, except we haven't actually got the hips on. The distance from the corner here to here is longer than the distance from here to here or here to here. And that means that the angle is different. And that's where the hip and valley angles come in. This is one of the benefits of using the rise and run method that they use in the States. I'm not sure if they use it anywhere else. So everything is cut at 35 degrees, which is a seven on the common scale. So if we go to the hip valley scale and cut these at a seven, the angle should be perfect. However, that only works if it's a right angle. If you've got say a 45 degree corner on a house, you're gonna have to work that out manually. I want to cut a seven on the hip and valley scale. Works out at about 26 degrees for reference. Now for that top, we actually want a 45 degree angle both ways so that it slots into this corner here. There we go, right. Cutting bird mouths, a bigger saw will save you a little bit of effort here. I'm just doing a small saw because it doesn't cut through into the second layer, or barely does. Yeah, it's pretty good. Good enough, I reckon. Uh, the only thing missing is the overhang, which is easy enough. You could make the seat cut a 45 as well, sit on there nicely, but actually there's pretty much no load on that tail, so it doesn't matter, and it's still being supported. But again, you would have bigger rafters. What if I've forgotten what my roof pitch is? Or maybe I've just torn the roof off something and I don't know. Stick your speed square up on the top there and you can either use a plumb line or a level. Look at that, 35 degrees. Let's tear this apart. Right. Just need to find somewhere to dump that. 